Acts chapter 3. Now, Peter and John, okay, it's Peter and John. I always keep forgetting which two it was. Peter and John went up together into the temple. Now, we read from the previous chapter, chapter 2, this is where they would meet. This is where they would go. We're still in the early infancy of the church. We're still in Jerusalem. So they're going to the temple. They're being forbidden by the priests, by the people, but that's where they're going. They're going where the people are. And where are the people? Well, we just had the, the Feast of uh, Pentecost. So even though the Pharisees don't like it, the priests don't like it, they're going where the people are. Where do you go with the gospel? You go where the people are. Even people don't like it. You go where the people are. Into the temple at the hour of prayer. Remember when Zacharias, John the Baptist's father, went in to burn the incense? The people were outside praying. So this would be about the same time that when John went in, and John's father went in. Being the ninth hour, 3 p.m. So that may have been the same time that John's father went in to pray when he met the angel Gabriel. And a certain man, certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried. So this guy from uh, before he was, was born was lame. He was born lame inside the womb. Whom they laid daily at the temple, at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. So they would bring this guy every day, put him in front of this gate, and he would collect alms. There's no way he could work. There's no way he could make a living. So they would bring him here to the people, and the people would give him money. He, this is not like the people you see outside of Walmart. This guy is written by the Bible. He cannot work. He cannot make a living. There's no social security. There's no insurance. He's got to rely on his brethren, the Jews. The law said, there's someone who couldn't take care of themselves. You help them. Too bad that has been taken advantage today. When you get real people who really need help, you're not sure who they are. Because many phonies. Which is called beautiful. Isn't that an interesting name? Beautiful. To ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple asked alms. So here he is. He's at the gate. Peter and John are walking up to the temple. This guy sees these two men. So Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John. Said, look on us. Hey, look at me. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Okay, you going to give me money? Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. Now you get a picture of that guy's face, you know, slumping down. Well, what do you want my attention for? I need money. I need to live on money. You got a sandwich? I don't know what kind of drinks they sold back. You got something for me? I mean, silver and gold, that's what I need. What are you going to give me? But such as I have, I give thee. Well, wait a minute. He's got no silver or gold. What can he give him? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There's a Jewish in the temple. Jewish. It's all Jewish. Why is this being done? Well, there's people going in and out of the temple. They're all Israelites. They're all Jewish people. Jews require a sign. So Peter and John are now going to show their authority by Christ and the Holy Spirit. And we're the apostles. We're right. Mark 16, there's no completed Bible, so we're going to confirm the word how. That gentleman right there, get up and walk. Now, I said they did this daily for this guy. So this guy was known. This guy had, hey, there's that guy that asked for money. There's that guy is lame. Almost like that gentleman that was blind. Call his family. Is this man really blind? And the one that lay near the pool. Lay by, by the pool of Siloam, too. But now, here comes, oh my God, look at the name, Peter and John. Jesus is gone. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. How are these Jews going to know that these men are, are the men by signs? How are you going to know today, 2016, what I preach on the street is right if I don't show signs? Because the Bible says it so. I got documented proof by numerous witnesses about the resurrected Christ. I've got a Bible that's living, alive, and has produced in people's lives. 
Now, you choose not to believe it, that's to your own damnation. <clears throat> You're not going to get the assurance that I have in Christ. Do you believe on Christ? But Peter and John can't go to the temple and say, open your Bible to Acts chapter 3. It's being lived right now. We don't even know where Luke is to be writing this. We know he joins Paul later, but there's no Acts chapter 3. There's no John. There's no Mark. There's no Matthew. There's no Luke. So Mark 16 is to confirm the word. He took him by the right hand. I think Jesus would say, just rise up and walk. That guy would have just boing. Remember the man with the withered hand? Stick out your hand. Boing. There's the hand. And lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So the Holy Spirit telling us this was no con man. This guy was lame because of his bones in his feet and had no strength. So if you were to come up and say, well, this was just phony baloney, some kind of magic, some kind of Holy Spirit already recorded for you, it's bones in his legs. And I believe God, I believe Jesus Christ, I believe the Holy Spirit. If you don't, you're going to find charge against. What was it? It was his ankle and his feet bones. That's all you need to know. He was unable to walk. Everything else was good. Why don't you x-ray these people outside of Walmart? Check them out. Instead, oh, throwing, throwing uh, dung in the Bible and upon God. No, go check those other people out first before you start throwing God out. Throw them out. And he leaping, leaping up, stood and walked. So he's never stood before and he never walked. And he's never leaped. Look at him. He's happy for joy. And entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. No therapy. No doctors. Remember who wrote, remember who wrote the book of Acts? A doctor is shooting down his own doctor. Remember that woman that had the blood for 12 years? She spent all her money on the doctor. You bad boy, you doctor, you. Even when I was in that bed for a month, I had to learn how to rewalk. Yeah. This guy, I would assume he laid down or sat down some kind. But with his ankle bones and his feet bones, he could have been too well good uh, position. So there's no therapy. He's in there praising God. He's walking up those stairs. You have to go upstairs to go into that temple. And all the people saw him walking. He never done that. And praising God. Now, now you see what this sign's done? All the people are looking like, and you know what they're remembering? Somebody else did that. Somebody else gave infirmity, put it aside, and helped the people. Somebody else cast out devils. And they would know that those somebody right here, especially Peter and John, they were followers of a man called Jesus. And the story is out not only the miracles that Jesus done in his lifetime, but he's risen from the grave. He sent his disciples out before he ascended in the right hand of the Father. How do we know this is true? Were you at the temple this morning? No, I wasn't. What happened? That John and that Peter, man, you know that guy that sat there, you give a dollar every week? Yeah. What up, Jewish money? That guy stood up and walked in the temple and praising God, and all the people were then praising God. So what do you do 2016 now when you got a completed Bible? They'll know that God's able to make men walk. I know a man, when I first got saved in the church I was, he was in a wheelchair. Both his both his legs were gone. I don't know, whatever it was. He was, he was a, a, a Greek. He'd tell me all the time, he says, Dolly, one day I'm going to be walking in heaven. I look at him, you know, I was a new Christian. like, okay, buddy, whatever you say. I didn't know. I didn't know we got a new body. I was new. But I know that gentleman that didn't have no legs. He's going to have his feet and ankle bones restored. He's going to be leaping and jumping up and down. I know God can do that. But see, you got to believe that. Do you really believe that this happened with Peter and John? Yes, I do. How do you know? Or I don't know what... Does my Bible say what number of Acts is? I don't know if I have it recorded in this one. But let's see. Check it out. I have a number. What book this is? Well, let's see. Matthew thirty-nine, 
40, 40, let's say the 43rd book, 42nd, 43rd book. I have studied chapter by chapter 43 books at least. I believe every single story that's happened in there. I believe this one too. Not many do. Not even Christians do. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. They knew that it was he that which sat. Okay, so he sat down for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Now who's getting all attention? The man, but also who? John and Peter. Who else got attention that caused a little controversy because of envy? John and people, I mean, John and Peter now are starting to get that the chief priests are going to start recognizing them for envy now, just as Jesus. And they're not going to be too happy. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, man, he's got them on a grip. All the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. John 10, 23 for that porch that's called Solomon. That was in previous. Uh, a healing here was an open door to the Jews for a group gospel. What do you mean? Here's this man. He's asked for alms. He couldn't walk. He's leaping, he's excited, he's holding on to the two men that did it. All these people are running, they're finding out what's going on here, what's going on here. And Peter or John, one of them would say, calm the crowd down and say, when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people. Now here comes the message. Ye men of Israel, did you get that? Oh, did you get that? Oh, we'll get it in a minute. Why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us? As though by our own power or holiness, we had made this man dog. No, no, it's not us. Peter's saying, it's not us. We had nothing to do with it. He's pointing to the power of God. That's where he's leading up to. Get your eyes off us. It ain't us. Ready? The God of Abraham. Do you know who, the, you know who Abraham is? He's the foundation of Jewish race. Not the Gentiles. All right, okay, Ishmael, Arabians, and of Isaac. Now, did you just throw the Ishmael out, to throw the Arabians out, throw the Gentiles out. And of Jacob, 100% Jewish. Acts begins Jewish. We are starting out, we can have bagels, we can't eat bacon. We can't have lobster. We can't have selfish. We are under the law. And we're going to pass to a Jew of pure Jews here. And he's going to be sitting down having meatballs and all kinds of weird food with an Italian guy named Cornelius before we're finished. And Paul's going to step in. And he's going to go to, a, to these people called Gentiles. And he's going to preach to them in, a, in about... Three quarters of his ministry, he's going to look at those Jews and say, listen, you take care of yourself. I'm going to the Gentiles. And the book finishes Gentile. The book begins with bagels and ends up with shrimp and lobster and pork. That's how it does. Plain and simple. Now, Peter gets up and preach. Look how, look how Peter is now. Man, he ain't talking stupid no more, is he? But, man, he's... He's got a crowd. He's like, okay, I'm going to open my mouth. And I'm going to open it for Jesus. And I think God saw that in him. Peter, you got a ready mouth. I'm going to let you use it. And sometimes I wonder if he's got a mouth like mine, loud. So, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the God of our fathers, Jews, has glorified his son, Jesus. Ready? Whom ye delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate. Peter, who are you talking about denying Jesus? He denied Jesus at uh, 
Caiaphas' house. But he got it right. Jesus, uh, Peter, do you love me? Yeah, Lord, you know I love you. Feed my lambs. Peter, you love me? Yeah, Lord, you know I love you. Feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? And Peter began just, Lord, you know I love you. Feed my... Peter's not under that condemnation no more. He got it settled with the Lord. And he could turn around and say, you guys denied the Lord. Remember Pilate said, what shall I do with this man? And the chief priest provoked him, crucify him, crucify him. Those people could have yelled out just as much, save him, save him. But they didn't. And this, uh, in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go, Peter says Pilate was going to let him go. How's that? That's a bold statement in Acts chapter 3 that Peter said. Peter, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, said Pilate was going to let him go that afternoon. Do you see how determined Pilate was? Only thing, you know what Dan Pilate, if he, if he didn't ever trust Jesus, he was a people fearer. And fear will do the worst things. I think somewhere in the Bible, I believe it's the New Testament, that it says fear casts out love, something like that. Fear will keep you from doing wonderful things, and fear will make you do things you ought not to be doing. My wife and children went on top of the uh, the lighthouse down here in Florida. I didn't go up. I missed a beautiful scene. Well, I said, why? The fear of heights. They told me it was beautiful. I got to take their word for it. I didn't go up. Fear. He was determined to let Jesus go. But ye denied the Holy One and the capital J just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you Barabbas. If they would have cried out, who shall I let go at this feast? Barabbas or the, this one called Jesus. If they would have said Jesus, one person would have said Jesus. Barabbas would have said, okay, bye bye Jesus, see ya. So the kind of way when they said Barabbas, that kind of really pulled uh, Pilate's chain like, oh, man. That's not what they were supposed to say. Now, he was a murderer. Jesus didn't do nothing. And they wanted a murderer. Desired, delivered to be granted unto you and killed the prince of life. Who killed the Jews? According to Peter, two chapters, the Jews did. They had to kill that Passover lamb. God did not kill that Passover lamb. He told them how to do it, but the Jews had to kill their lamb every year. Now it came time for the lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. If a Gentile killed that lamb, it would have been no good. As far as I read in the book of Exodus, not one Egyptian killed a lamb. Killed the Holy One and the just and desired the murderer to be granted to you and killed the Prince of Life. <coughs> whom God has raised from the dead. Well, that's Jesus Christ. Current events in Acts chapter 3. It just happened. Whereof we are witnesses. Whoa. Who? The Bible says over 400 people. We saw Jesus. We're all witnesses of Jesus, the resurrected. And his name through faith in his, well, and his name through faith in his name has made this man strong. You know who made this man walk? The name of Jesus Christ. Peter says, I in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's some name. Don't try that today, Gentile. Don't try that today, church. We're not under signs. It may not work. You say, will it work? It could, but most chances may not. I hate to have you make a fool of yourself. Now, I believe God can heal. Since as far as I can remember in my life, I've had all kinds of boo-boos and scrapes, and I've seen God heal them. But I got some some injuries and stuff on my body right now. I've never seen God heal. I've never seen God. Remove. I got a scar in my 
my ankle from a bicycle as a little boy. I've never seen that disappear. I'd be foolish, name of Jesus Christ, scar, go away. I'd be a phony. But I've had sick children, I had a sick wife, or I, I put my hand on them and prayed and seen. I've called for the church elders to anoint with oil and prayer and seen. I'm not going to limit God. But I'm going to limit, I'm going to limit man. That's what I'm going to do. Whom ye see and know. This gentleman right here. The one that won't let us go. And he's kicking up having a good old time. Yea, the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. By him. The faith which is by him. Jesus. Is this guy him. Man, look, look what's happening. You guys are now witness of what Jesus did, did just did. And it's not John, it's not me. Now go spread aboard and tell people the work of Jesus is still going. And now, brethren, I walked that through ignorance ye did it, as did all your rulers. You guys didn't know what you were doing. Listen. Us 12 disciples had no idea what Jesus was saying. And then when he showed up in the upper room after his resurrection, he had to ball us out because we didn't even understand. The two men that were walking to Enamus had no idea it was Jesus. Mary, sitting in the garden, had no idea it was Jesus. You people did not know what you did. You killed Jesus and then you went sat down and had your lamb. Uh, the lamb was on the cross. By those things which God before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets, inspiration. Men wrote the Bible. Well, Peter said out of the mouth of the prophets did God write. And Christ should suffer. He has so fulfilled. Well, even the disciples didn't get that in the beginning. They didn't get that to after the resurrected Christ when they saw the marks. Repent. Oh, there's that repent. There's that repent. He's preaching to a people outside the temple. And the words are repent. Ye therefore and be converted. What happened to baptism? It's gone. Peter has moved from the baptism of John to repentance and conversion to have your sins blurred out. He's not in the blood yet. But he got rid of the water. Water can't save you. Look at that. Your sins may be blotted out. We're starting to get to the, what the blood does. We're getting to the blood. When the times of refreshing shall come upon the presence of the Lord. Refreshing the nation of Israel as a corporate body. When God will give them as a corporate a new spirit. He shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, second advent. Not rapture. No church age. No present day church age yet. There's no blood yet. We just had water. Now we just got repentance and be converted. And then the second advent of Jesus. The church is it's here, but it's not here. Paul hasn't preached nothing. Paul's, Paul's going to be start mounting up his sword and start killing Christians pretty soon. These people that are with John and Peter, do you realize they're going out preaching the word and, and Paul's killing them? This is where it begins at the temple. These people are taking what they've seen. They're taking it out. They're getting converts. They're repenting. They're getting right. And Paul is killing them. Whom the heaven must receive unto the times of restitution. Jewish. Restoration. Putting that Jew back where he was. Re. Re. Institute. Institution. Building. Making that Jew who he was supposed to be. Of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets. Since the world began, Enoch preached, the Bible tells us. 
It says Abel's blood spoke out. So yeah, men wrote the Bible, but they were inspired by God and they were called holy men. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, our fathers, Jewish. Those fathers are the Jewish fathers. From the time they came out of Exodus to Moses died in the mountain. A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, Jewish, like unto me. And that's when you went in the gospel. Is he that prophet? What prophet? The one that's supposed to be like Moses. Moses and Jesus were so close together you couldn't tell them apart. Except for Moses was a sinner. Jesus never sinned. And they kept saying, we got Moses' seeds. We follow Moses. You did not because you would have recognized Moses in Jesus. Isn't it funny? In the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter knew exactly who Moses and Elijah was. And they didn't wear name tags. Hi, my name is Moses. And there's nowhere it said, Jesus said, Peter, this is Moses. Moses, this is Peter. Elijah, this is John. John, this, and he didn't say any of that. It shall come to pass later that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. What man has the power to destroy Jews? Now, now it's all of Hitler. It's not going to be the Antichrist. It's going to be Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ, Peter tells us in chapter 3, is that prophet that Moses spoke of. And that kept coming up in the life of Jesus. Jesus spoke to the disciples, spoke to Peter. said, hey, who do people say I am? Well, they say you're John the Baptist. Well, what else? They say you're Elias. What? They say some other prophet. They're that prophet. But who do you say I am? Peter says, thou art the Christ. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel, Samuel was a prophet, and those that followed after, as many as spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. What? The death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. Go back in the Old Testament, you will find Jesus. They say every chapter, you will find Jesus. Some will say every verse. It's all about, Samuel wrote about Jesus. Moses wrote about Jesus. Elijah wrote about Jesus. Enoch spoke of Jesus. Noah preached of Jesus. They're all there. It's all about one man, Jesus Christ, of this brethren, Jewish. So John 1 says, he came on his own, and his own received him not. Ye are the children of the prophets, Jewish, and of the covenant which God made with our fathers. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. What is that covenant? That piece of land. That as the stars in the sky, as the sand of the sea. Jewish people with a literal, physical piece of land which is fought over year after year, year after year. Not New Jerusalem. That's us. The new earth. That goes to Abraham and his descendants. That new earth that's coming down, that's Abraham's. Ye the children of the prophets of the covenant which God made of our fathers. Go in the Old Testament and find where God made any covenant. He made a covenant with the animals in Noah. But with one race of people. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Saying unto Abraham. Okay, now we're going to the Abraham covenant. In thy seed all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. That's Genesis 12, 3. That goes from Abraham, Isaac, skips one boy, and goes to Jacob. So I remember last year or two years ago, there was a big magazine in the, in the checkout center, you know, Abraham, the father of Islam the, and the father of Judaism. Yeah, but there's one difference. God went from Abraham to Isaac, not Ishmael. Didn't, he didn't report that. The Bible speaks, Paul, Paul writes to us, there was a Hagar. Hagar is not part of it. 
And in thy seed shall the kingdoms, the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Jewish people. How are the kingdoms of the earth blessed? Because Jesus Christ came of one seed. Jewish. Who is the most hated people in the world? Jewish. You know why you don't join the KKK? Because they're against Jewish people. You know why you're against the Catholic Church? Because they're against Jewish people. You know why you're against Jehovah Witnesses? Because they steal from the Jewish people. Anybody who goes against that Jew, you get away from them. The Bible says, I will curse them that curse thee. Any president of the United States that messes with that Jew, God's going to mess with the United States. And we're getting there. Unto you first, the Jews, God, having raised up his son, Jesus. Oh, so Peter's telling us a little... For, a little Prophecy here. We're going to start out a book. Let's call it Acts of the Apostles. Let's say it's going to be preached to you Jews first. Well, what comes after first? A second, a third, a fourth? You got a guy who's running a race and there's only one person that won the race. You don't say he came in first. Unto you first, God, having raised up his son, Jesus, sent him to bless you. After he raised him up, the resurrection. This is not the life of Jesus. This is the resurrection of Jesus. In turning away every one of you from his iniquities. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now look what Peter's now preaching. The finished resurrection began Christianity. That resurrection begins your iniquities being cleansed and washed. Peter's got a mouthful. Peter knows the gospel. And he's preaching first to Jews.